Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video we're going to be doing 30 fan-made cards provided by Tytar Jr. once again. So let's just go ahead and get straight into reviewing these cards and seeing basically how they would compare to the main streets of Gadget Sand Meta. So first up we have Desdel Star Eye, a 8 mana neutral legendary, 8 7 stats, immune to all effects and powers. Um, so that's a kind of word description that you have to think about for a minute. That means it can't be affected by hero powers, it can't be affected by battle cry effects, it can't be affected by um, something like a twisting nether, right? Because that, like a spell effect is still an effect, right? I'm assuming that that's what it means here. So the only way this can take damage is if your opponent has a minion or a weapon and deals direct damage to it. Now, um, an 8 mana 8 7 is weak stats by default, so it has to do something really impressive for it to be worth it there. If you compare this to uh, Shogoth the Slitherer, 9 mana 5 9 taunt can't be affected by uh, basically, or it can't be targeted by spell effects or hero powers. Um, the effect on this one, of course, is a little bit more all inclusive because it would ignore things like Twisting Nether. Um, but it's got a worse stat line, and it doesn't have taunt, which is a pretty big deal. You can't use this as an anti-aggro tool. The only real use for Desdel Star I, I see is if you're going control versus control, and your opponent only has direct answers, like many control priests sword, then they'll have a hard time dealing with a card like this, and they may need to trade two or three minions on it. But in most other circumstances, it's either you, you decide to do seven damage to it with your minions, and it's not a big deal, it's just... Yeah, maybe you trade two four drops into an eight drop, whatever. Or you just ignore it completely and you go face, because decks that are going to play an eight mana minion are really slow and almost always control decks. So overall, I think this card would be pretty weak. Um, if you tried to put this in a deck currently, Pirate Everything would just stomp right over you. It would be a completely dead card. Uh, so I don't think that this would be a particularly competitive card, because it's just too weak to aggro decks, and aggro decks are always kind of a threat. You can't just assume that everything's going to be control versus control. And if it could, um, I still don't think that the effect is better than something like a Ragnaros. So you'd put Ragnaros instead of this. Okay, next up, 2 mana, 2-3 two, Priest minion. Whenever this minion is healed, gained plus, one, uh, plus 2, plus 1. So it's uh, really similar to that new, other new card, the Mana Geode that was just released in Main Streets, where whenever the minion is healed, you get to summon a 2-2 two, two on the board. Now, uh, is this minion getting a plus 2, plus 1 buff better than getting a 2-2 two, two on the board? I would say probably, because usually token effects are a little bit weaker than regular minions that just have good stat lines. Like, uh, if you think about, um, shoot, what's it called? The 4-mana Druid minion that when you play it, you can choose one to either get a 2-2, two, two, or you can uh, ramp up, gain an empty mana crystal. So that card's technically like a 5-5 five, five of stats, but you don't really play it for the stats. You play it for ramp, and the stats are just there if you don't need the ramp. So a 3-3 a three, three and a 2-2 two, two for five, uh, 4 mana isn't really that strong, apparently. Um, so that said, if this was plus 2, plus 2, when you heal it, it would obviously be way better than mana geode, because, well, what do you do on... Like, you, you coin this on turn one um, to get a two drop out. You use the two drop to hit the pirate or something like that. And then on turn two, you heal it, and it gives it a plus two, plus one buff, which is kind of almost like playing a Mark of the Wild on it, in a way. Um, so in that sense, the effect's pretty strong. Uh, though you could say the Mana Geode effect is also pretty strong. Um, the, the problem is it is kind of hard to get off, because what if they have like a Fiery War Axe, they just kill the 2 drop, and uh, that's it. It doesn't really do anything fantastic after that. Another way you could compare the Enlightened Warrior is to a Holy Champion, 4 mana 3, 5 Priest minion, that gets plus 2 whenever a, well basically any target's healed. Um, yeah, that's a bit weaker of an effect, less hard to proc. Um, but, I mean, this card, kind of card could play well in a heal deck as well. Like Mana Geode, now that I think about it, actually does fit into a heal the board circle of healing for the purpose of healing 
um, kind of deck play style. Uh, but overall, I think that this would be a solid include in like a Reno deck or something like that. Um, just because the effect is strong enough to just put like a 2-3 in the deck that might get a lot better. That said, um, a lot of the decks that are currently out there don't actually play Mana Geode, but I do feel like this is slightly stronger than a Mana Geode. Um, but yeah, pretty competitive card overall. Next up, uh, Doomsaying Jokester, 8 mana, 0, 7 legendary. At the start of this turn, uh, at the start of your turn, kill this minion. Death Rattle, give a player Doom and the other three resurrects. Uh, uh, other three resurrects. Okay, I'm guessing that that card is going to be explained more later on with extra cards in this um, set, hopefully. Hard to evaluate without knowing what Doom does, but I mean, honestly, expecting a 07 to live, uh, well, it, it, it dies either way, doesn't it? Definitely, I don't give a play to Doom. Yeah, we have to see the cards. We'll come back to that. Combat Medic, 4 mana, 2 6, Taunt and Rage. Uh, oh, okay, so it has Taunt, and when it enrages, double the damage and healing of your spells. Um, okay, just knowing Prophet Valen as a card that costs 3 more mana. Uh, there's probably a good way to enrage this card. You could just put it on the field and then it happens to get the enrage and then you get the effect of this. Uh, really, really strong. Honestly, if this card was in the game, it would be a must remove. Um, as a 2-6, probably way too strong of an effect to put on a 4-mana minion, honestly. And yeah, it does require the enrage. But what happens is the opponent doesn't remove it, then you hit a minion with it. And then you get to, like, Mind Blast twice for 20 damage and you end the game on turn 5 or something. I mean, in a dream scenario. Um, but still, yeah, doubling the effect of healing and damage spells for Priest is pretty good. So I think that that's going to be too much. Maybe if it was, like, plus 2 damage, plus 2 healing or something like that, I could see that. Um, but yeah, game-breaking effect there, to be honest. Uh, line Cutter. So, one mana, one, two. This card always starts in your hand. Death Rattle, draw a card. Okay, so it's kind of like patches in a way. Um, it always starts in your hand. Does that mean if you try to mulligan it, it just it, it automatically wins the mulligan rather than you drawing a card? Or does it mean that you put this in your deck and after doing your mulligan, this just like gets drawn out of your deck and added to your hand? I think there's a really big difference there, because it's the difference between this being a uh, basically a draw one card or a draw two card. I'm going to assume that this means that it always wins the mulligan, so you get to death rattle draw a card, but you don't get like an extra card in your starting hand, which would be absolutely game-breaking. So a one mana one two that draws a card, uh, that's really strong actually. Um, you could compare it to the zero two. Uh, arcane Egg or whatever, but the problem with that card is it has no attack, so your opponent can ignore it. But you can't ignore a one attack minion, so there's a big difference. Plus a one attack minion can actually trade. So this is really strong. Um, you could argue that this should be a two cost mana if you want to be fair to cards like Loot Quarter. Um, just a one mana card that draws a card is going to be really strong, especially if it has stats like this on it. So very, very good. Uh, probably OP. Ferocious Wolverine, 4 mana, 2-2, two, two. battle cry deal, 2 damage to an enemy and 1 damage to all other enemies. Um, yeah, okay, so it's kind of like a Ravaging Ghoul effect that gets 1 extra damage on 1 enemy and does not damage your own minions, which is actually relevant for anything that's not a warrior. Um, but uh, 4 mana, that, that is paying quite a bit for it. So I guess you could think of it like a swipe. I guess that's what it was going for. Swipe where two of the stats gets transferred into a pretty bad minion. I mean, a 2-2 doesn't really do much on turn 4, to be honest. But the battle cry effect is decent. Uh, I think that this would be probably a reasonably playable card. Okay, another way to think of it would kind of be like Keeper of the Grove. So pre-nerf, it had 4 HP, and it was really strong. Um, so if this had 4 HP, it would be insanely strong, because it, it, it's AoE, it damages all other enemies. So if you think about it like a Keeper of the Grove, a nerfed Keeper of the Grove, um, but then you also add in, deal one damage to all other enemies, then this is actually a pretty strong card. So I would go ahead and say that this would be uh, a very competitive card, to be honest.
not exactly sure where it would fit in. Maybe pretty much any control deck. Like, a priest would really love to have a card like this because they struggle to deal one damage to enemies. Uh, but I guess you could put it in a lot of different decks. It's kind of like having a swipe as a minion, which is really good. Okay, uh, Shadow Dwelling. Two mana, each time you cast a Shadow Spell or Hero Power this turn, give a minion in your hand plus two plus two. Okay, I mean, that's kind of interesting. So it actually encourages Shadow Form decks um, and Shadow Priest in, a, in a general, I guess you could say. Uh, also has some synergy with, like, Cabal cards that steal, let's say, Warlock cards, or discover a Warlock card, so you could get Shadow Bolt, and then that counts for this, uh, which isn't too bad. Now, um, a, a spell that requires you to play more spells than you get plus two, plus two to random minions in your hand, I don't know if that's too strong in general. Uh, oh, I do see it's actually a Cabal card here, so that means that there's going to be, like, a Warlock and a Mage version, too, I, I suppose. Um, which means you could put this in a Warlock deck, too. And it, it might be a little better in Warlock, because Warlock, I th think, would be a little bit more minion-focused, or has more things to buff, like Imp Gang Boss. Uh, yeah, though, I, I feel like for this card to be good, it does require a lot of setup. So maybe it would be okay in Reno Warlock, but not so great in other decks like Reno Priest. Um... Because for this to be good, you have to get it to proc twice. And to get it pro to proc twice, you have to play two spells or two hero powers. So unless you already shadow formed, it's going to be pretty hard to do a hero power. I mean, to do two shadow spells plus this in your hand. I guess you could play two shadow dwellings to work off of each other, too. Uh, it, it runs into the same kind of problem as uh, lock and load decks do. do. And I wanted lock and load to be really good, but in reality, it just kind of sucks. Because for you to like save up a six card combo that doesn't kill your opponent but just gives you more cards in your hand it's not too impressive so a six card combo that just buffs your hand by plus two plus two eh not that great and priest doesn't play that many minions anyway neither does reno warlock or reno mage I, well reno mate warlock maybe but yeah not not amazing um okay six mana paladin legendary seven five in that that's fire sworn Divine Shield, Battlecry, give all minions in your hand. Divine Shield. Ah, uh, super good. Wow, yeah. Um, so there's the 7 mana Grime Street Protector, which is 6-6 six, six, Taunt. Battlecry, give two adjacent minions. Divine Shield. But I think when you're dealing with your hand, it's a lot better, because, um, I mean, you don't have to have a board presence in order for this to be good. And you can get more Divine Shields than just one or two. Uh, honestly, like, if you have a big hand, you're playing a hand paladin, and you give, like, five minions Divine Shield, and those minions are already things like a 5-5, five, five, that's gonna be crazy. Um, and 7-6 stats, not bad for 6 mana either. Um, probably overstatted. Should be more like a 4-4 four, four if, uh, you want it to be balanced, or at least cost a couple more mana. Um, yeah, don't underestimate that effect. Lots of Divine Shields is really strong. But overall, not too bad of a concept. I do like the theme of Hand Paladin. Okay, Ogre Creep, 2 mana, 3, 4, can't attack, Enrage, can attack. Okay, uh, yeah, that's not too bad. You could kind of compare it to like an Ancient Watcher. You gotta trigger its ability to attack somehow. It's easier to make functional than an Ancient Watcher, but it has lower stats than Ancient Watcher. Um, Enraging as a warrior, not too hard. All you need to do is like play Ravaging Ghoul, uh, Inner Fire it. Um, so yeah, if you want to play a deck that hits your own minions a lot, which is kind of just all warrior decks in general, but could also be like a patron deck, this would be uh, pretty strong, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, just if you think of uh, Totem Golem, two and a half-ish mana, three, four. Super good. It basically makes the card in all uh, Shaman decks. So you could kind of compare this. Yeah, it can't attack, but it also doesn't overload you one. And Enraging and Warrior isn't too hard. So I think that would be pretty competitive in certain playstyles of Warrior. It's definitely kind of like a Silence Priest thing. You have to be playing that kind of weird deck to make it work, but you could definitely make it work. Four mana, Awaken. Minions played on your next turn have charge. Uh, okay. That would be really bad for the game. 
Because that's just like, like um, Charge from Warrior, they nerfed it because people were sick of dying to raging Wargen decks. But this just means like, well, okay, so imagine if Charge cost zero mana and hit all minions on your board. It's kind of like, well, you have one turn to not die, set up your taunts. And I guess it does give your opponent one turn to react to it. But what if they're just playing a deck that um, basically has no answers to Awaken? They just die because you have the combo in hand? Uh, I like, to a degree, combo decks, they sort of have a place. They're, they're different. They're interesting. They usually play strange cards. Like, uh, the new Priest combo is like uh, Garrison Commander, Spawn of Shadows, and then Hero Powering six times, combined with Raz of the Change. And that's like a pretty interesting use of those cards, and actually does manage to do a lot of damage. Not sure if it's good, but I've seen it in a couple of uh, videos. But this is like basically saying, well... Combined with my Tharzan, I'm going to hit you with 30 damage next turn. And, like, those kind of decks, yeah, not so great. I think the game already has too much of it. Like, too many times have I died to just Mally Ghost being there. Um, uh, then there's the Kun Cthune deck now. Uh, Raging Worgen was pretty cancerous. Um, yeah, so it's just like... So you play Awaken, and it's like, oh, well, I guess I need six taunts, so I'm going to lose the game next turn. Well, I guess I didn't draw the card I, le I, I need. I just die because I can't interact with the board or anything like that. Um, that said, it, if you gave this to Priest, I guess Priest would become a lot more threatening because it would actually give them an offensive card. And maybe they need more offensive cards, honestly. Like, Shadow Priest kind of still needs to be a thing. It hasn't really gotten there. They put in shadow cards, but none of them really play well with each other. Um, instead, like, at best, you get, like, some kind of weird shadow form control deck where you play shadow form, sure, and maybe you play one shadow madness, but that's about it. It's not really a shadow priest. It's just, uh, I change my hero power to do damage, and that's it. Yeah, so I personally don't really like the card, but I, I guess if you want to talk about game balance, yeah, four mana is probably... Well, is it too too? Is it of the right cost? I was gonna say it's the right cost, but it might be too low. Yeah, just I, I don't really want to just die to charge randomly. Like, oh, you go. Well, you have another Leroy combo deck that doesn't need Leroy. Like, I don't know, Molten Giants to the face or something. Great. Uh, Mother Hen, two mana, two two. Uh, if this minion attacks, let's expand this window a bit. Okay, if this minion attacks, uh, if this minion takes damage three times, sorry, summon five angry chickens. Okay, that's cute. So angry chicken is like useless unless you buff it, and this is pretty useless unless you buff it too, because uh, obviously it's not going to take three damage and live unless uh, you have it as like an 8-8 eight eight or something like that. So I think an interesting thing about this card is actually, you know, if you get five angry chickens off of like a 6-6 six, six mother hen, it, it's still terrible, but I guess you could say, well, you could put it in a hand buffing deck and then maybe one in a hundred games, it actually gets five angry chickens out. I, I think this was just more meant to be a joke, kind of. Well, you know, in a way, it is, it is two mana though. I was thinking like doppelganger, but this is two mana. So what if you just do play a buff deck? And the opponent can't, like, go past this because you gave it taunt and, like, 10 health. So then the pirate warrior has to, like, pass their turn because they can't risk giving you 5-5 five five of minions. Nah, probably not, but okay. It, it's a cute card. Okay, 5 mana, Priest Legendary, 3-7. Um, that'll cry. Cast Shadow Ward Madness, Shadow Ward Death, or Shadow Ward Horror. Okay, so it doesn't have Shadow Ward Pain, so it won't target itself. Um, Shadow Ward Death or Shadow Ward Horror. I think one thing to kind of question is, if your opponent doesn't have a 5 attack or more minion, is Shadow Ward Death still going to be an option? I'm assuming yes, like it just fizzles if it has no target. Um, in which case, yeah, I guess you could say that this is pretty strong still, because... Say it does hit, if it does hit with a Shadow Ward Death or a Shadow Ward Madness or a Shadow Ward Horror, you get really good value. And if you don't get really good value or it just fizzles, it's still a 3-7. So it's it's an okay card that can become great if you get lucky on the RNG. 
And I mean, maybe that's not the kind of card Blizzard wants for the game, but I, I think overall you would probably put this in a Reno deck. You'd probably put this in most Priest decks, honestly. You could even say, well, it's good to have in a Tempo deck, because in a Tempo deck, uh, five isn't too high mana cost to put in the deck, and sometimes you'll hit something with the Shadowwood deck, uh, death and just gain board control immediately, and that's kind of what you would want. So, yeah, this would be a strong card for the game for sure. Okay, uh, another priest card, 4 mana 2-6, opportun opportunistic cleric, has plus 3 attack while your opponent has more than 20 health. Uh, okay, I'm getting a Magic the Gathering vibe from this for sure. Um, but, let's see. So, uh, it's a 4 mana 5-6 basically. Because in, in most cases, as a priest, you're going to be playing control. Um, yeah, it becomes a lot weaker if you're trying to be aggressive at all. So, do you want to give a really big minion to a control deck? Uh, I mean, it would be solid. You would definitely put this in control deck. So, it makes it makes control priest stronger and it makes Reno priest stronger because their last thing on the main is actually dealing damage to the opponent. That that's just what they do after you after they clear your board. Um. So, it's not that it's, like, too game-breaking of a card to put in the game, but it is a strong addition that would go in those decks. Um, currently, like, Reno Priest and Dragon Priest are actually pretty strong, so I don't know how much more you'd want to put them, uh, how much more you'd want to push them. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you included this in the Priest lineup, it would be a strong include, because Priest doesn't care about your opponent's health. So, yeah, 4 mana, 5, 6, why wouldn't you put it in? Uh, Pyrene Shield Maiden, 4 mana, 2, 4, Taunt, when attacked, only takes 1 damage at a time. The minion to the left or right takes the rest chosen randomly. Uh, okay, so what if there is no minion to the left or the right? Then it's just like a 216 Taunt in a way, because it only takes 1 damage at a time. Um, kind of feels a lot like Death Lord, like a minion that's really tough to kill. Uh... But does kind of have the the downside of having weak stats initially. But it doesn't really have weak stats. No, I, I think it's more like a two eight really. So it's it's like a four mana death lord that doesn't summon a minion for your opponent, and um, that would be pretty good. I think pretty good. Um, now you do have to be careful because you know the minions to the left or the right would take extra damage, and that would mean you wouldn't want to build a board when you have this card. So you'd only play this in a control deck like Warrior or Priest, but that might be fine because they don't really need to develop the board, they just need to stall you out. Um, now, uh, one thing that is really key to this card is if there is no minion to the left or right, does this take the rest of the damage anyway? So that it just deflects the damage, but it won't like completely ignore the damage? Or does this minion just completely shave off all the extra damage that gets dealt? Um, really good against weapons too, should point that out. So like, you swing an Arcanite Reaper at this and it tanks 5 damage and only takes 1 damage, that's really good. Um, yeah, I think that this would be a really strong card. Not sure if it would be a great card to add to the game. I mean, because it's kind of like, well, if you're an aggro deck and they play this, you just lose, right? Um, okay, next up, 5 mana rogue spell, shadow meld. Give your minions that don't attack or take damage stealth at the end of each turn for the rest of the game. Alright, uh, don't attack or take damage. So that means any minion you play effectively as stealth, the turn they come out. So it's like, give all your minions stealth, basically. Um, as long as they don't attack in the turn. Probably really strong in a way, or is it though? Because it does cost five mana. Like it's hard to evaluate. It's kind of like a combo card because it, it prevents your opponent from interacting with your minions, and then you just put the right minions on the board. Like I don't know, you could play a bunch of seven attack minions that have low HP, and I mean, just for example, that probably wouldn't be the optimal strategy. And then you just build a board up until you can one-shot your opponent, and then they die, and then you win the game. Or you play this, and then you Gadget Sand Auctioneer, uh, and all your Gadget Sand Auctioneers have stealth you don't even need Conceal, which could be pretty strong too. Um, like, 
the card would definitely need a certain kind of combo deck, and for the same reason that Awaken isn't really super healthy as a card, I think that this wouldn't be super healthy as a card, because it just removes your ability to interact with anything you do. It's it's saying, well, until I do my damage, you can't even touch my minions. And that just means, well, Priest loses, because I'm, I'm just going to take the beat down, and they can't use the single target removal until the damage has already been done. So... Like, while this card would suck against aggro decks, it really does ruin those control matchups. And it, it doesn't make it a control matchup anymore. It makes it a uh, control player waits to die matchup. Kind of like Mally Ghost Rogue, honestly. Okay, Magma Golem, 5 mana, 8, 8. Each time this minion attacks, gain overload 3. Uh, okay. Interesting. Uh, I would hazard to say that this is probably on the strong side, kind of like a uh, Fell Reaver in a way, but I don't think getting overloaded for three is going to be that huge of a deal, because if you get to push eight to your opponent's face, odds are that like by turn seven they're already dead, or you only need like one lightning bolt to finish them off anyway. So like at five mana, eight, eight, your opponent has to remove it. So it's a huge threat that's going to take basically close to an equal amount of mana to remove it like a shadow wood death would be like the perfect removal and that only gives you a two mana advantage as the priest player or like wax execute that's like three and a half mana still and that's assuming that they have the answers to it i, I don't think you would leave this on board just because it's like well if they attack they're going to overload for three well, um, yeah, because, like, it's better than a Booty Bay Bodyguard, right? Um, the 5 mana 7 6 that your minions cost 3 more. Because you can still play minions. Like, your minions aren't going to cost 3 more. It just means you have 3 less to play around with on turn 7 and each extra turn that this lives. But for you to even get the downside, it would have already had to do massive damage, which is what you want as an aggro player. So, like,. If you play this on turn 5, your turn 6 is going to be killing them anyway. So in most cases, you don't really even lose anything. Like, they, they either kill this, or you kill them, and their overload doesn't matter. So, a 5 mana 8-8, eight, eight, yeah, you'd play that. And the overload 3, not really that enormous of a downside, really. So, yeah, really good card. Gruff Slasher, a 4 mana 1-6. When this minion attacks, it deals its damage to all enemy characters. Alright, so it's one of those cards that has to be buffed in order to be good. Uh, hand buffing was really supposed to be more of a Grimy Goons thing, but still. Uh, you could say, well, Flame Tongue Totem or Bloodlust or something like that. I assume you still have to target a minion? Like, if, if you... It, it, well, it's target an enemy. So if you target a minion with this, does it attack the minion and then it does damage? Or does it do all the damage to all enemy characters and then it does its regular attack? Or does it just attack nothingness? And then it, it deals damage to everything and doesn't take any damage itself. Um, kind of relevant which way it works. I'm assuming that if it attacks a minion, that it still takes damage from the enemy minion. It just does the effect to all enemy characters. Um, so, probably not an amazing card still. Uh, there's a card similar to this. It's the 4 mana 5 3 warrior minion. Uh, I can't remember the name because no one ever plays it, but when it attacks a minion, it hits adjacent minions. And the reason that's not played is because it's got really bad stats and it's just going to get removed easily. I mean, you could kind of argue that about this. Yeah, it takes more damage to kill it, but it's got one attack. I mean, come on. Like, the opponent just uses two of its dragons and it hits it, and the dragons take two damage. They both survive, and you just wasted four mana basically so this card probably isn't good i guess when it if you had a charge effect or something for it which hopefully you don't it could be better but um yeah no and yeah just not really a super good card i think it requires too much setup and i would not really enjoy it if this card was able to just charge from your hand and clear your entire board well i mean i guess you could say the aoe sort of do that already anyway right uh, yeah, not my cup of tea, though. Uh, Champion of Valor, 5 mana, 2, 3. From now on, at the start of your turn, you draw until you have 3 cards. Uh, that card is 
probably ridiculous because you put that in something like Pirate Warrior, right? And you draw into this, and then you have infinite, uh, basically, ammunition to go until the end of the game. Um, you could argue that, like, by turn 6, 7, 8, your opponent is going to basically have enough mana to stabilize, regardless of how many cards you have, but I'm not really sure that's true. Uh, I think that this would be a pretty strong card. It, it, it's like playing a, um, a Jeeves, which is actually, you know, from my own experience, decently playable in uh, wild mode right now, because everybody's playing those control decks, so if you play an aggro Jeeves deck, you just draw a lot of cards and they have to use removal on it. But it's a Jeeves that still is a Jeeves after it leaves the field, and it does nothing for your opponent. And it only costs one more mana. And it's a 2-5. I think it said it was a 2-3, but it's actually a 2-5. So, yeah, for those sets, this is a really strong card. Um, and a lot of aggressive decks. And, uh, yeah, not too much else to say about it. It's like a better Hanzo the Greed dude. Whatever the 4-mana 5-4 guy who draws cards for you is. Because it works after it leaves the field, too. Which is a really strong effect. Okay, Kazak the Supreme. 5 mana, 5, 6. Your minions cost health instead of mana. Um, so this would be a really, really game-breaking card because it basically means if you have a combo in hand that takes 15 mana or something like that, you can just pay 15 health for it and win the game immediately. Uh, it's kind of like a Tharzan that's also a 5, 6 for 5 mana and can be played in the same turn. Oh, I guess a better comparison would be like Kuhn the Cthune, uh, shoot, no, uh, Kuhn the Forgotten King. So it's 10 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, refresh all your mana crystals. But you can do a lot more with like 15 mana or 15 health than you can do with 15, uh, 10 mana. Uh, yeah, Druids have Aviana, which really amplifies that effect. But um, yeah, if you put this in the game, uh, Warlocks would abuse the hell out of it for combo decks, and yeah, you could say, well, if you want to play a 15 mana combo, you have to have 15 health still, but Reno decks are actually pretty good at doing that, so you Reno, your opponent's out of steam to really roll over you, or if they're a control deck, they weren't doing any damage really to begin with, and then you have 25 health to play around with, so you do a 25 mana, quote-unquote, churn, and you just do disgusting things. I mean... Mally Ghost for one, like Mally Ghost when you have 15 mana, what easy, <laughs> you're just gonna annihilate your opponent. Uh, that said, Willocks don't have a lot of really good spells, but they do have, um, they do have Faceless Manipulator, uh, Leroy Jenkins, and cards like that, so what if you do a Leroy combo that requires 15 mana and always does 30 damage, or 12 mana even, um, could be crazy. I might be overestimating the card, but even at its worst, it's still a 5-mana five 5-6 five, demon, which is the best stat line for a pretty much a vanilla 5-mana minion that doesn't have any massive downsides. 5-6 is a really strong, so it's a really strong card. Borderline, no, probably OP. Probably just going to encourage combo decks. 8-mana, uh, 8-8. Eight, eight, eight. Mana monger. Reduce the cost by however much mana you didn't spend last turn. Uh, okay, let me process that. So, I, I think that this is kind of like the new version of one of the cards I reviewed last time. So, hold on, let me think about that. So, you have like a turn 9, and you didn't pay any mana. So, you just basically pass the turn with the hero power, and then the next turn you drop an 8-8. Eight, eight. And you can drop two 8-8s eight because it, it, any card with this effect also benefits from it. Um, yeah, it would be a really strong card, because, I mean, a lot of control decks, they're not going to use up all their mana, so it's going to be like, you do like a 5 mana turn on turn 8, you do some removal, and then next turn, this is going to be a 5 mana 8-8, eight, eight, which is good. Um, and there will be times when you have a really weak turn, and then you just play, play a 0 mana 8-8, eight, eight, and then the rest of your normal turn. Uh, also, some potential with things like the new version of Charge that Warriors have. You can only attack minions with it, but then it's like, well, you charge out a few of these, I guess. No, well, maybe that's going too far. Maybe no one's going to play that Charge. Um, 
But yeah, I think that this could be 10 mana and still pretty good. So like 10 mana, you have a weak turn, you play it the following turn as a 5 mana, 10, 5 mana, 8, 8, because you floated 5 mana. Usually giants are supposed to be late game anyway, so I, I think if this was 10 mana, it would be fine. Uh, 8 mana, probably a little too strong. Because it's it, in a way, it's kind of like easier to pull off than like an arcane giant. That said, uh, here's the caveat to it. Um, if you have a really weak turn, that means you probably don't have many cards in hand because you had no play worth making. Which means, like, if you draw into this, sure, you'll play it for like zero mana, but then uh, what's the rest of your turn? Because the previous turn you had nothing to do, and this turn you have nothing to do too because you just summon an 8 8 for like two mana. And then what do you do with the rest of the mana? Not much. Um, that said, overall, I feel like this would be really strong, and it would probably still be pretty good for 10 mana, too. Uh, more than that, and it would be kind of pushing it too much into the situational side. So, like, 10 mana, fine. 8 mana, really strong. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to see a card like this in the game. A card that encourages you to kind of pass your turn. 3 mana Magma Rager, the new version. Uh, 5 mana, 1. Uh, no, 3 mana, 5, 1, death rattle, deal 2 damage to all characters. Um, I think that's kind of interesting, yeah. Uh, is it too much to, like, put something like that in the game? Nah, nah, you could justify that. Because, like, you have the 1 mana tentacle of Nazoth that deals 1 damage to all ca uh, all minions. And that's a 1 mana, 1, 1. This has really bad stats still. Obviously, it's a 1 health minion, and that's why it never gets played. Um... But then, you know, deal 2 damage to all characters, it's kind of like a delayed volcanic potion. And having it as a death battle is a lot worse than as a battle cry. So, um, having a minion with pretty terrible stats that has a pretty good effect is pretty okay, I think. So, I think actually giving this to Magma Rager would be fine for the game. Which is just to say how bad Magma Rager is. Um, yeah, cool take on that card. But they'll never do it, because it's it's supposed to be a meme card at this point. It's supposed to be the card where it's like, wow, a 3 mana with 5 attack, that's a lot of damage. I can really push my opponent to die. But um, in reality, like everybody knows now that it's terrible. Except for maybe the newest of new players. But I think even new players catch on pretty quick. Okay, Demon Slayer. 5 mana, zero seven Warlock minion. At the start of your turn, kill this minion and add Lord Javaxis to your hand. Uh, this card... Harbinger, which is four, six mana, four, six. At the start of your turn, add a uh, draw a ten cost card from your deck. It might be ten cost minion. Um, and that has a better stat line than this. At least that minion can trade with other minions. It's kind of like a iffy five drop for six mana. This is like a two drop for five mana. Because I mean, remember. Doomsayer is a thing. Uh, the, the Doomsayer effect going off is probably stronger than this. I don't think Lord Jaraxxus is that insane of a card. What are you going to do? Add three Lord Jaraxxuses to your hand or something? I mean... And the minion dies too. It's just like draw Lord Jaraxxus if it lives. Yeah. It's just not going to cut it. No way. It... If this was like a... Four or seven or something? Maybe? No, probably not. Like, I don't think your opponent cares that much about preventing you from having Lord Jaraxxus in your hand. And if, otherwise it's just a really bad 5-drop. Like a 5-drop that does literally nothing but draw a Jaraxxus. Yeah, there's a better card for that. It's called Sense Demons. Uh, three mana, draw two demons from your deck, and most Warlock decks only have like two demons anyway. Just play Sense Demons. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, that's terrible. If Sense Demons is better than this, it's terrible. Uh, Mimic. One mana. Give your opponent's hero power. Uh, gain your opponent's hero power this turn only. You can use it as many times as possible this turn only. Okay, for a second I thought that was going to be like an infinite combo. Well, actually it is an infinite combo because Raz of the Chain is a thing. So you play Raz of the Chain, you play Mimic. They are a mage. I, I guess it's as many times as possible this turn. Only. I, I guess what the wording is kind of implying there is that you would run out of time to hear blast your opponent's face, but I'm not sure about that. I think, I think you could probably do 30 hero blasts or pretty 
uh, fire blasts are pretty close to that in one turn if you had time for it. And, like, what's a fire blast take? Like, two seconds? Um, yeah. And you have a minute and a half to take your turn. So, if you play Raz of the Chained and then you mimic a mage, you instantly win the game for one mana. Uh, also works with Hunter Hero Power. If you do it with, like, a... Uh, warrior, you gain 60 armor. With heal, with priest, you heal your entire board and your hero to full. Uh, yeah, this is a card you don't want to give to priest because rather the chain is a thing. If you if you said that it was locked at like two mana, period, like it cannot be reduced, then maybe that would be fine because then you could do it like well. You copy the Warlock Hero Power, you draw three cards, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, this card with Raz of the Chained breaks the game 100%. So, without Raz of the Chained, maybe. With Raz of the Chained, hell no. <laughs> Fanatic, Shadow Priest, 4 mana, 4, 5. Inspire gain, plus 3, plus 3. Only works in Shadow form. I kind of like the idea of that card, because... Um, a, it's another Inspire card, and there haven't really been too many good ones for that. And B, it encourages you to play a Shadow Priest deck. Um, and it's not too insane, because like you can think of the 5 mana neutral 4-4, uh, four, four, Inspire gain plus 2 plus 2 whenever you use your hero power. Uh, that card's not played at all, neither is the Warlock version of that, and those are from the Grand Tournament, they've been around forever. So, if you give like a Yeti the ability to inspire plus three plus three, yeah, I, I think that becomes a pretty good card because it, it's it's good with it, it's reasonable without the inspire, and then it becomes good with the inspire. So you would only put it in a Shadow Priest deck, but you would put it in a Shadow Priest deck. So I think that would be pretty good card design and a good card overall. Purposeful cleric, three mana, four one. Man, you like priests. <laughs> Okay, this, this minion is immune while your opponent has more minions than you. Um, okay, that's interesting. So, your opponent's like playing a pirate deck. They can't trade into this, so they're going to ignore this minion, but you're going to get a lot of trades. So, it's like, it's like having a Scarlet Crusader with a permanent Divine Shield on it until your opponent decides to trade or they just lose their whole board. Or you basically build your board too much, which isn't a big deal, because if, if you have the bigger board as the control deck, you're already winning anyway, because you've shut down the opponent. And, and maybe you just wouldn't play that last minion and you hero power instead if you needed that effect to still be around. Um, but it is really weak in other situations, like your opponent isn't playing minions because they're a control warrior, then this is just a 4-1 and uh, basically pretty terrible. But uh, I think it would be fine. You include it as an anti-aggro tool, and yeah, it might not be great against the control decks, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, I mean, it's still good against control decks in some ways. Um, if your opponent ever has tempo, this counters the tempo. So yeah, interesting card design. Uh, would probably be playable. Goblin Blacksmith, 3 mana, 4, 3. Swap the durability and attack of a weapon. Uh, okay. So what would you actually do with that? Like, Gore Howl, you make it a 1-7? Yeah, that would probably suck. Uh, Fiery Vorex, you make it a 2-3? Weird. Um, like, um, Fool's Bane, you make it a 4-3? I don't know. I, yeah, I, I have a hard time seeing where that would be a really strong effect. Like, why would you play this instead of the one that just... Uh, Goblin Pawnbroker? Where you just give a weapon in your hand plus one plus one as a straight up buff rather than swapping. A buff is better than swapping, especially for weapons, because you kind of want lots of durability and attack, not just one. Um, much more so than with minions, I think. So I think this would probably be weak. It, it might be better if it was like swap the durability and attack of your opponent's weapon, because then it's like, well, you take the go how and you make it kind of worthless. But then it's just like an aesthetic swan cruise, right? So I guess this card would be okay to put in the game, uh, but it would be extremely situational and probably not see any serious play. But I mean, four mana, four three, I guess it's fine. Um, would it be better as a four mana, three four? Maybe. I, I guess it's a fine card to add. I mean, filler cards are fine. 
Chorus, Black Feather, 5 mana, 5, 3, Rogue. Battle Cry, summon 3 random 1-1 one, one legendary minions from your opponent's class. So, I'm assuming that means copies of random legendaries from your opponent's class. Which means you're going to take their Antonidas, their um, Anomalous, their uh, Ronin, their Tyrion Forge Ring, their Confessor Palestress. There's a lot of good class legendaries out there, and there's very few ones that don't benefit from just being a random 1-1 one, one on the board. Like, most of them have really strong effects, either consistent effects or death battle effects. So you play this against a mage, you get Archmage Antonidas, and it's like you cheated out Archmage Antonidas for two less mana, and as a rogue, you can generate so many fireballs for things like Preparation, Shadow Step, all that other kind of stuff. Not, not to mention you can shadow step this guy and replay it for three more 1-1 one, one legendaries. This is like Barnes on crack. I mean, it's even better than that because it's very selective. There's only like three or four class legendaries at any given time, so it's not really going to be random. It's going to be like, these are the three you're going to get. What if you like get Archmage Antonidas twice, and then you preparation, you preparation of fireball, <laughs> and then you play the fireball, you get three more fireballs, or two more fireballs. Okay, yeah, um, this would be the, like, bane of mages. It, it's just way too strong. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, if, if I was designing, I wouldn't put this kind of an effect in the game, just because it has so much game-breaking potential. But if you did want to balance it a bit more, maybe make it like 7 mana for the same stats, honestly. Because 3 one, 1 legendaries, I mean, you're getting like Tyrion Forge Ring, which is going to give you a, a Sun Fury. Very good. Like a 5, if it was just 1 man legendary. 5 mana, 5, 3, 1, 1 taunt, and a quip or sun fury, that would be really good still. But then you have 3 legendaries. So, yeah. Too powerful. Too powerful. Maybe make it 1 legendary. And then it might not be as ridiculous, but it would still be pretty ridiculous in a lot of ways. Okay, a uh, few cards left. Aspiring Demon Hunter, two mana, two, uh, two mana, three, three. Summon a one, one demon for your opponent. So it's funny that it gives your opponent a demon, so that the demon hunter can hunt the demon. Um, you could also say, hey, well, you could put it in Warlock, and then you have a target for Sacrificial Pact. Uh, so Sacrificial Pact kind of becomes give a minion plus one attack, heal your hero for five health, which isn't too bad. I mean, for a zero mana card, that's not too bad. Um, I wonder if there are any other ways you can abuse the fact that your opponent has a demon at all. Um, but yeah, having this as a card would be pretty okay. You wouldn't put it in a random deck because it's, but then it becomes like a 2-2 two -two because you, you subtract the stats of the one you're giving your opponent in a way. Um, and there's not too many ways you can abuse like a 3-3 stat line for two mana. I mean, there are bigger stat lines, but there's not like any crazy combo like Succubus Shadow Flame that people do. Um, but yeah, it could be interesting in a Warlock deck, because Warlocks can destroy demons, or maybe they'll have, like, enslave a demon, or things of that nature, or you could play it in, like, a, a, a um, like a Reno Control deck, where you summon a minion for your opponent, and then you mind control attack, and then you steal the bigger minion, and, uh, that screws them up, kind of like having Bad Rat, uh, is that what it's called? Dirty Rat, Dirty Rat's the card. Okay, Devouring Behemoth, 4 mana, 2-2, two, two. Stealth, destroy a random mi minion at the start of each turn, gain plus 3, plus 3 for each. Uh, a random minion could also mean your opponent's minions. So you put this on the board, it doesn't die because it has stealth, and it eats your opponent's minions. That's a really strong control tool. And then it becomes a 5-5, five, five, and you can use it to kill your opponent's other minions, and then... If it survives, then basically it'll kill another minion. I guess a downside is that it can destroy itself, and that can be kind of disastrous. So this would be kind of a weird card. You probably put it in, like, a deck that's like a Reno deck, because you don't want to eat your own minions. But then your opponent might be flooding the board with pirates, and that could be good. Um, so I think that this would be playable. In, in a very weird way, it would be playable. But you would have those situations where it destroys itself, and that would be disastrous. That would be like, well, you took the 1 in 5 chance and you missed it, so I guess you lose the game. But sometimes you would win the game because you would hit like the Frothing Berserker and then you would use it to trade into another minion and you would still have a minion on the board and maybe you can Demon Wrath in addition to that, you know, get a full board clear. Could be pretty good. Insightful Priest. 
Battlecry, discover a minion from the battlefield, 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Uh, really strong card, because it's it's a very, very selective discover. So your opponent, they play the big drop like Ragnaros, and there's only a few minions on the battlefield, so you get to choose from one of three, which means they're basically 100% guaranteed to get Ragnaros if that's what you want. So you could kind of think of it as a convert card, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, with the convert effect on it, which is a 2 mana priest spell. And, you know, it's kind of arguable whether that's really worth two cost. Um, probably is in a way, but you, you're kind of paying one mana for that effect here. Because it's a four mana, four, four. Which is like a good three drop with the ability to discover your opponent's Ragnaros. So like a three mana, four, a four mana, four, four that draws Ragnaros from your opponent's board. I'd say that's really good. Probably too strong? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. You, you could easily say that there should be a 5 mana 4-4 four, four, though. Because um, when you combine two effects, like a minion that has decent stats and an effect that's really strong, it's sometimes worth it to pay extra mana for that. Like, uh, instance would be Onyx Bishop, 5 mana, 3-4, that also resurrects a minion. And resurrect is normally a 2-cost spell. Uh, Onyx Bishop stat-wise is a 3-drop, so 3-drop plus a 2-drop and 1 card gives you a really strong card for the Resurrect deck. So this gives you a really strong card for a control deck. And I think that's finally the last card. So that's been 30 new cards by Titar Jr. Um, overall, I'd say this set was uh, a, a bit more balanced. Some cards, like, okay, let's go back to that Rogue Legendary. Um, Korra's Black Feather. That's too crazy of an effect. You gotta be careful about those crazy effects because the combo potential is just gonna blow up the game. Um, but aside from that, I, I do like these cards. I dig that there's a lot of priest cards in it, still being one of my favorite classes. Uh, but I guess for now, that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this fan made card review with me. I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.